Well, hello, everybody. Uh, we're going to talk about coming into the light. Uh, I've been meditating a lot on light, on uh, God is light. You know, the the season's getting darker, right? Where's more, at least in this side of the hemisphere. And I know that this side of the hemisphere is not all there is. Uh, but you start to um, uh, kind of maybe turn get a little bit more uh, introspective. Uh, we're just on another side in the U.S. of midterm elections, and that's always painful. <laughs> and, you know, there's a lot going on uh, economically in our country and so many countries. It's tanking. Um, there's a lot of... Uh, unrest and violence and division and blah, blah, blah. And it feels dark. And then on top of that, when you add in people's personal uh, challenges, I, I, you know, one of the things I do a lot of is coaching and I hear people's stories and, you know, tough stuff, tough stuff. And so people are hurting, people are needing hope. Uh, people are needing also not only uh, to have hope and light and life in their life. And yes, you get that. But we also need to come up higher in and of ourselves. Uh, because at the end of the day, um, this is about a relationship with a God that loved us and gave himself up for us. And who's conforming us into his image. And, you know, uh, it, historically, the Christian church has been its greatest, its finest uh, in times of darkness. Uh, when things got a little too cushy, <laughs> uh, we didn't do so well. We kind of sold out. We sold out to economic um, interests. We sold out to political interests. And suddenly we were operating in mixture of the kingdom of God and the kingdoms of this world. And this is when corruption entered. And um, and this was dark days, dark days for the Christian church in terms of who she is called to be. And so uh, and so God has this invitation of coming into the light, his light. And, you know, when you come into light, things are revealed. Like if you have a big zit on your face, there it is. <laughs> if you have, uh, you know, uh, scars or uh, if you've got dirt and soil, if there, if you have a scowl on your face, if you've got evil intentions, you know, coming into the light, it reveals everything. It also reveals beauty. It also reveals goodness. It also reveals pure intention. It just reveals it's a level playing ground. And what light reveals is the good and what light reveals is the bad. And because you're in the image and likeness of Christ, yes, you are get into, get down with your bad self. Your original design is as God, right? I will make them in my image and my likeness, the image bearers, the likeness bearers of God. That's who you are. So the light reveals that. And it also reveals everything that's not that. And it also reveals pain. It also reveals um, uh, reveals places that need healing. It also reveals trauma and light heals. You know, even just medically, uh, there's so many different modalities where different wavelengths of light heal. Light reveals, right? It's diagnostic, even in medically, right? And essentially, x-rays are, are forms of light or wavelengths. And so um, coming into the light is there to reveal and to heal. And since God is light, he's all about uh, healing his kids, which means he has to reveal everything that's not like that. And then he gets to empower that you to be healed, so it is the way to go. Our other alternative is staying in the dark and that we're not, we weren't created for the dark. We were created for the light. So let's talk about that because anything that we're hiding, there's shame. And when we hide, um, shame is empowered. Sin is empowered and we fall into greater and greater bondage. And that was never our original intent. Our original design, uh, Genesis 2.25, um, Actually, that's not the one I wanted. Uh, I'll just do it by memory. Genesis 1, uh, 
27, 28. And this is God. God will create, God said, let us create humankind in our image and likeness and in our image and likeness, he created he, them. Okay. So male and female, right? And so um, we are image bearers. If you're a human being, you're an image bearer of God. There's no other, nothing was created <clears throat> apart from God. I just want to say, uh, bring that up really quick. So in John uh, 1, it says, in the beginning was the word. The word is the logos, which is Christ. Another word for Jesus, the Christ or the Savior, right? And the word or Jesus or the Son of God was with God and the word was God. So the Son is Jesus Christ is every much God as Father God as Holy Spirit. This is homolusius. This is this of the same substance. This was uh, established by the uh, Nicene creeds uh, and all of that. So he was with God in the beginning. Okay, so this is original, originally in the beginning where there was no beginning, right? Because God is eternal. Through him, all things were made. And without him, nothing was made that was made. Okay, so you know what? If there's a created thing, it was God who created it. And only God creates his children. So the enemy doesn't create kids, right? So there's nothing that was made apart from him and everything that was made was good. So evil comes from a turning away from good, um, but you are good. If you're a human being, you are good. And this teaching that the church has done uh, and traditionally uh, in some uh, areas of Christianity that you have a sin nature uh, is caca because you have the nature of God. Now, let's be very clear that um that we sin and sometimes it feels that we're bad or we're evil but that doesn't make it truth that makes it something that needs to be healed because you know the lies that we believe empower the ways that we behave so our original design genesis 225 and i be uh, this is why a man leaves his father and mother and he's united to his wife they become one flesh adam and his wife were both naked and they felt no shame. Okay. So to be naked before God and without shame is our original design. Now he's not there to be naked as in to cover, uncover. And, you know, if you've been harmed, sometimes that whole concept of being naked is terrifying because it means that you're vulnerable. But when you're before God, who is all good and he's all glory, you are actually covered in his light and in his glory. And there's nothing to hide. There's nothing shame worthy and you are totally safe, right? So uh, when did shame and fear enter the human race? Let's go to Genesis 3, 6, uh, 3, 6. Um, and this is NIV, when the women saw the fruit of the tree was good for food, pleasing to the eye, desirable for wi wisdom, she took some and ate it. She also gave some to her husband, who was Adam, who was with her and he ate it. Now God had told them, don't eat of that tree. Don't eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. It will be harmful to you. Don't do it. But they did it, um, tempted by the enemy. Um, then both, uh, then the eyes of both were opened and they realized they were naked. So they sewed fig leaves together and made coverings for themselves. So when, when, um, when Eve was deceived, the word of God says Eve was deceived and she ate cause she thought, wow, I want to be like God. Well, the truth was she was already like God. Uh, if you try to be something that you already are, it means you don't believe that you already are. So you don't experience who you are. I'm going to say that again, cause I know that was a lot. If you are struggling to be who you really are, that means you don't believe who you really are. That means you're not going to experience who you really are, even though you are, you, you are that you, am, you are that. Okay. So if you're good and pure and holy and without spot or blemish, like God says you are, but you don't believe that. And you're trying to get there from here. It means you don't believe you're that. So you're not experiencing that, but it doesn't make it not true. That means your perspective, whatever is coming against that lie needs to be healed, right? And that's what God is doing, right? 
And when that's healed, then you will experience, oh my God, I've been this way my whole life. I just was treated like a piece of crap. And so I thought I was a piece of crap and I treated myself like a piece of crap. I let myself treat other people, uh, let other people treat me like a piece of crap. And I treat others like a piece of crap. And there you have the human condition, (laughs) the fallen human condition. But that doesn't mean you're a piece of crap. If this is the diamond of who you are, um, uh, uh, Katie uh, Surges um, has this beautiful um, revelation of this. She does this beautifully. But if this is the diamond, the, um, it's called in, in, um, in, in the Greek, the Imago Dei, the image of God, the image bearer of God, and you're this diamond and you are covered with a bunch of crap, a bunch of poop, a bunch of refuse, just the most defiling thing you can think of. Well, you smell like crap and oh, wow, you look like crap. And so you walk around like this, believing you're crap. Other people may treat you like a piece of crap and you think you're a piece of crap. You treat others like a piece of crap and you act like a piece of crap. But who are you really? Are you the crap? No, you're not this. You're this. And I happen to have a beautiful diamond. Thank you, Brian. (laughs) And it's covered. So does this diamond underneath, is it worth any less because it's covered with a piece of crap? No, it's just covered with a piece of crap. So what is God's response? Honey, let me awaken you. Let me start cleansing layer after layer after layer of crap so I can show the beauty of who you are, the beauty, I'll do the diamond here, right? The beauty of who you are, right? That's who you are. That's the Imago Dei. And this is coming into the light so the crap can be removed. Because what's the light doing? It's revealing, yeah, that's crap right there. Yeah, that's crap. Yeah, that's not who you are. (laughs) We got to diagnose it so you can heal it, so you can be you. And only God can do this. And so we get to, but we get to cooperate. We can fight it. You can fight for the right to believe your crap. You can fight for the right to call crap good when it's really crap. You can fight for the right to treat others like crap, uh, to run and hide. You can do all of that. You have a free will and people do. And it's called foolishness and it leads to destruction, right? Um, So in verse seven, it says, then the eyes of both were opened and they realized they were naked So they were open. Actually, they were shut. They were open to the seen realm and this dark realm, right? The dark realm of the shadow. When you turn away from God. Okay. So if I turn away towards this light, I'm looking at my hand on the palm side and it's darker, right? So this side of my palm is experiencing darkness. Okay. But this is the light. But when I turn this way, It's all light and I experience light. And this is where darkness comes from. We turn away from the light and it's it's, it's evil of our own creation as humanity. And if we live in this, this is all we know, but that's not all there is. And the more we turn, the more we can heal. This is good. Yeah, I'm getting something out of this. Okay. (laughs) Okay. I I believe you are too. Okay. It says, then the eyes of both of them were open and they realized that they were naked. Well, you know, before they were naked and unashamed because they didn't even realize they were naked. You know why? Because they were covered. They were loved. There was nothing missing. And so you could stand before God and walk with him and slash her in the cool of the day. Um, and you know, by the way, the cool of the day, just so you know, they were walking with God in the cool of the day. Um, that is actually the word Ruach, which is the word spirit, which is Holy Spirit. So they were walking in the spirit and that's feminine. So you have the masculine Lord God includes father, Jesus, uh, father, God, and the son and the cool of the day, um, uh, Holy Spirit, which in this case is a feminine expression, Um, And so all of the Trinity, they were walking in and they were naked and unashamed. Why? There was no sin. There was nothing to be ashamed of. There was nothing to feel. They were covered with glory and the light of God. When they turned away, they turned away from the glory. And all of a sudden you look naked. Why? Because that glory is not covering you because you've turned away from your source, which is the light. And now you feel naked and there was shame. Okay. And they sewed fig leaves together and made coverings for themselves. So they're trying to make artificial coverings, 
when God wanted to be their covering. Love covers a multitude of sins, right? So love covers, okay? Um, and it says, uh, then the man and his wife heard the sound of God, the Lord God, masculine, and as he was walking in the cool of the day, um, rach feminine, they hid from the Lord God among the trees of the garden. So this is the first time God was ever seen as something that was scary, right? As something to hide from. This is where fear and shame entered because they ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And before it was all good. They had no knowledge of evil, but trying to make themselves like God when they already were at the suggestion of the serpent. Okay. Um, their eyes were open and suddenly there was shame. There was fear. Uh, but the Lord God called to the man, Adam, who, by the way, was the one who rebels. Eve was deceived. Okay. Adam rebelled. So the human race fell because of Adam, the man, not the woman. The woman was deceived. She didn't help. Okay. I'm not like saying, yeah, go be deceived. I'm just saying the woman just the, the man just, the woman was deceived. The man flat out rebelled. Um, and um, the Lord God, God called, where are you? Now God knew where they were. But what was God trying to do? Who is God as love? Who is eternally love? Who's always the same? Who's wild about his kids? Now his son, his daughter's been deceived. His son has rebelled. And what does a good God who is all love do? Now he's trying to get Adam to diagnose himself. Where are you? Not just like, are you in the bush or are you behind the rock? No, where are you? What happened to your heart? Let's repent. Wouldn't that be great if Adam had repented? Dang it, but he didn't, right? Um, where are you? Um, he answered, I heard you in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid. Okay, so I hear you, God, who is all goodness, all light, all life, the safest thing in the universe, the most forgiving, merciful, lovely person in the universe. And he's hiding from goodness, from safety, as if he can create his own safety. I'm going to hide from goodness because I'm afraid of that. You're not that. Because what happened was when their eyes were open, they had turned away from God and they were not seeing him as he was. And suddenly he was scary. How can love be scary? unless you've been damaged. Okay. Um, love is the safest thing. Love casts out fear. Love is there for you, for your highest good. Right. Um, he, he answered, I heard you in the garden. I was afraid first time there's fear because I was naked. So I hid and he's, and, and God said, you can almost hear him how angry he's at this attack against his kids. Who told you that you were naked? Okay. Um, so who told you? Because that didn't come from God, Father, Son, and Spirit. Uh, that didn't come from the animals. Um, that came from the serpent who's out to destroy the sons and daughters of God. And then he said, have you eaten from the tree that I commanded you not to eat from? Okay. Now, did God know? Yes. Yeah, so what is God trying to do? Number one, when he's saying, who told you this? Okay. Is there any opinion that, you know, God is truth. So is there anyone else's opinion that matters if it differs from God's opinion, who is truth? Is there any truth apart from truth? The person who is truth. There's no truth apart from the person who is truth, who is love, who is light, who is life. There's no truth, light, life apart from the one who has li truth, light, life, and light. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, and so he's, he's, he's saying, okay, so I want you to think who told you this? Was it me? Cause if it wasn't me, it's not true. Right. Uh, why? Because they were covered in the glory of God. And then have you eaten from the tree? I commanded you not to eat. This is time to fess up. This is time to say, God, absolutely. This is time to run into the light and say, oh, I fell for deception or, oh, I rebelled against you. I am, forgive me. This is time to run into the light to receive forgiveness. Okay. To own your crap. 
which was Adam's to own and, 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 and Eve's to own, right? Oh, I was deceived or, oh, I rebelled against you. But unfortunately, what happened? So then the blame game came, right? The man's pointing to the woman, the woman you put me uh, with me here. She gave me some fruit from the tree and I ate it. Uh, and then the woman points to the, to the serpent and, you know, blah, 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 blah. And this is humanity. This is where we fell and turned away from the light. And we've been, that's when death was reaped. That's when, not that God was punishing that's the consequences of turning away from the light. If you turn away from the light, you're going to experience darkness. Okay. And so you can't turn away from the light and not experience darkness. And then if in your darkness, you say, well, God, you're punishing me. No, honey, turn to me. Let me heal that. Okay. So God doesn't punish you from turning away from the light, but he's, he's, he's wooing your heart to turn back. That means if you need to own crap, well, own crap. That's why he's already forgiven you. If if you need to say, oh my God, I was so deceived, own that. And so you can experience light and restoration and freedom and healing. And this is all of us. And this is not a one-time say a prayer, jump through the hoop, blah, 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 salvation prayer. I mean, do the salvation prayer. It's great. But understand your salvation is an ongoing thing. You're not trying to get saved from God. You're getting saved by God. You're not trying to get saved from punishment from God. You're trying to get saved from all the brokenness we experience as a humanity when we act as if we're separated from the one who is light, the one who loved us and gave himself up for us. Um, uh, let's see what I want to do here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, let's go to, oh my God, this one's so good. Um, Psalm 34, five, this is the NIV. So we're talking about um, uh, coming to the light, right? Um, this is just NIV version. So it says, those who look to him to look to Christ are radiant, radiating glory and light. Their faces are never covered with shame. So when you turn to the light, the light diagnosis, oh yeah, all of that, yeah, that that sin happened to you. Uh, yeah, you, you, you participated in that sin, all of that. He gets to strip off shame. He, he's forgiven. He's merciful. He strips off shame. He heals. He heals trauma. He strips off shame. He strips off condemnation. He strips off fear. And he strips off anything that doesn't look like you. And there you are looking like you according to your original design radiant isn't that amazing okay yay okay let's keep going um let's go to psalm 34 uh 4 through 5 i suspect this is niv but i didn't write it down <laughs> so forgive me um listen to my testimony i cried to the lord in my distress and he answered me so in your darkness Cry to the Lord in your distress. He will answer you. He freed me from all my fears. And this may be an ongoing thing. Your faces gaze upon him. That means you got to turn to him to gaze upon him. Join your life with his. You know, he's joined his life with yours. And to experience that, you need to decide that is an act of your will to join your life with his. Jesus, I choose you. And joy will come. Your faces will glisten with glory. You'll never wear that shame face again. Drink deeply. This has got to be passion translation because this is how he talks. Drink deeply of the pleasures of this God. Now, the pleasures of this God are not sexual pleasures. For those of you who've been harmed that way, it's not that. And the pleasures of this God are joy. His enjoying you as a son, as his daughter. He's so proud and he's so safe, right? Experience yourself the joyous mercies he gives to all those who hide themselves in him. See, if you're going to hide, hide in him. He's your refuge. Run to him. Hide in him. Baby step towards him. But he's where you find safety you find forgiveness you find mercy you find peace you find joy you find healing you find light you find life 
you find all those things turn back. It's not too late to turn back. And there are areas of us, maybe you've been walking with the Lord for a long time, but there's areas that you need to turn because we're all growing in the knowledge of him. There's all, we're all growing uh, in being conformed into his image. When I arrive, I, I will come find you, but I don't, don't hold your breath anytime soon. I'm still being transformed from glory to glory to glory. So that means that there's areas at this level of glory that I'm at and at the level of glory that you're at, there's more glory. So, which means there's still stuff hiding it. There's still thought patterns in my mind that are fearful, that are condemning, that are judgmental, uh, that are, um, um, uh, uh, that are, um, accuse God that look at myself as less than that are insecure. This is just the status of humanity. So we're all growing, right? We're all growing. And so God's conforming us into his image is the discipline that he gives because we all need to be disciplined, right? If we're not thinking hundred percent like Jesus, we need to be disciplined and discipline is not punishment. A disciple is a student Okay, students aren't punished, but they are, there are things that are pointed out to them that, yeah, that's, that's jacked up. That needs to go. No, that's not worthy of you to think like that. No, when you talk badly about yourself, that's not worthy about it. Knock it off. <laughs> okay. And you can repent, go the other way, think the other way, metanoia, be transformed by the renewing of your mind, come up to the higher level of thinking. And we do this from glory to glory to glory. We're transformed by the renewing of our mind because our minds are jacked up. We think that somehow we turn away from the light and we think that somehow there's going to be life there, right? And we experience darkness, right? You know, sin has pleasure for a season. So let me say, let me point out like a sin, like someone's really harmed you and you want revenge. Okay, that's sinful. The The wanting is understandable. The acting on it, okay, Um is sinful, right? He says, be angry and sin not. So the anger is totally understandable. This want to lash out and make them pay for what they did to you. That's sinful because now you've just become part of the problem and it's understandable, uh, but don't act on it. Use that self-control not to, because God, vengeance is mine, says the Lord, because he's the only one that sees 2020 and is, has the right to judge. Okay. So you bring your, um, your, your, the hor horrific stuff, maybe that you've experienced to the Lord and let him be the one to take care of it. Cause I guarantee you, whatever's happened to you that has been horrific. Maybe you were abandoned, maybe you were rejected, maybe you humiliated, may whatever, you know, pick a sin, any sin by someone else. Maybe you were abused. Maybe you, what, it, there's so many things we do to one another, right? Um, you know, that person can't pay you back for what they took from you. Someone stole your innocence. Um, someone murdered someone. Okay. They can't pay you back for what they took from you. Okay. Um, you know, and I'm not talking about a legal justice system in this natural realm. I'm just talking about justice period. They can't pay you back. Only God can pay you back. Only God can restore innocence. Only God is the one that has your murdered loved one and has them 100% for eternity. So you've really not lost them. You're just not seeing them right now. Okay. All of that. Okay. Only God can heal trauma. Pick a card, any card. Um, and so he's the one to pay back to you. So you can hide yourself in him, in your pain, in your fear, in your rage of things that have happened. Hide yourself in him. And let him empower you to walk it out in a way that will be life-giving for you. Because sometimes in our anger, we become the evil we hate. You know, and this has been historically, this is how human beings are. So we, you know, so we, in the French Revolution, so you, um, there was this atrocity of the aristocratic um, class who just, just bleeds horrifically the lower classes and people are in poverty in, in unspeakable ways that we don't know poverty today <laughs> and um, all of this. And then you get the French revolution. And so what do we do? We go the other ditch. And now we're, we're cutting people's heads off left and right and accusing people. And we've just become the evil we hate. 
And this happens historically. And so listen, rebel against that. Don't participate. No, I'm not going to be the evil I hate. As angry as I am, as enraged as I am, I'm not going to become that because your, um, you know, your uh, uh, justice for the hell you've been through is to live a good life. You overcome evil with good. And that takes a God, that, that takes God empowerment. That is totally supernatural. But then God can restore and you get to be the beautiful human being you were created. That's why forgiveness is so crucial for ourselves and for others. Um, let's go uh, take a different tack. Let's go to John 1, uh, 1, 1. Um, sorry, this makes me happy. It's a little happy moment right there. Please feel free to share. Uh, John 1, 1, Passion Translation. Uh, in the beginning, the living expression was already there. Some of you may know, know this, the living expression as the word. In the beginning was the word and the, okay, that, okay. So the living expression and the word or the logos is Christ. Christ is known as the word of God. He is the word. Um, he's the living expression. Okay. So Christ was there. It was already there. So in other words, Christ always has been, been, he's the son, but he's uncreated. Okay. He's, he's, he's not like the father was there and suddenly he birthed the son. No, the son was always there with the father and the living expression was with God, which is the father, God yet fully God, right? They were together face to face in the very beginning. And through his creative inspiration, the living expression made all things. So how many things did Christ make? all things. And if he's good, they're all good. So he didn't make evil, didn't create evil. Okay. He made all things and he's made you. And since he's good, he made you good. It's just a thing for nothing has existence apart from him. So really evil is a shadow realm of non-existence. Now you feel it. You can totally feel it. It's palpable. Uh, if you felt demonic overlay, it's palpable. Okay. So uh, we're not denying that. But the existence of what is true trumps all that stuff. Okay. The fountain of life was in him, was in Jesus, was in the Christ, the Savior, the word, the living expression, all same words for Jesus. For his life is the light for all humanity. Okay. So are you human? Yes. Is your neighbor human? Yes. And in him... You are in him, whether you know it or not, or experiencing it or not. And his life is your light, okay? Because you are human, right? And this light never fails to shine through the darkness. So somewhere in you, well, if you haven't chosen God, it's unlikely that you, uh, that very many of you that haven't chosen God are walking, you know, are watching this. But those of you that are, yay, I'm so glad you're watching um, there's something in you. Oh, I think it's Jesus. Uh, that is the light that is drawing you uh, to this, right? Um, so I lost my place, sorry. Uh, and this light, which is your light for all humanity, never fails to shine through the darkness. Light that darkness could not overcome. So whatever darkness you're feeling, and it's real, I understand it. We are suffering pups in a lot of ways. But the light overcomes the darkness. And the more we gaze at the person who is light, life, truth, love, glory, that person, the more the light is, is overcoming the darkness. So the darkness cannot squash the light. All you can do is be deceived or turn away from the light. But, you know, if you turn away, turn towards the light. Okay. It's really, and you know what? The darkness can't make you not turn towards the light. Okay. You get to decide. Um, this light never fails to shine through the darkness, light that the darkness could not overcome. Now, suddenly we're back to, um, to when Christ, the son of God was manifesting on the earth realm. Okay. Suddenly a man appeared who was sent from God, a messenger named John. This is John the Baptist. For those of you who don't know, he was a real dude. He was a prophet during about 2000 years ago. And when God became flesh and dwelt among us, 
in order to save us. John the Baptist witnessed to Jesus as the Messiah or the Savior, God made flesh, who came in the world to save all humanity. Okay. Um, but they didn't want people to be confused. Uh, for he came, John the Baptist, to witness, to point to the uh, the way to the light of life, point to the way to Christ, to Jesus, to the Logos, to the living expression. As he's also called the Lamb of God. Uh, he's also called the Lamb slain before the foundation of the world. This is Christ. This is uh, the second member of the Godhead, Godhood, not in rank or importance, but just in He's one of one of the Trinity, Father, Son, and Spirit, and he's the Lamb slain before the foundation of the world, um, because God knew humanity was going to do this nosedive, and before He sent humanity, He already sacrificed in the Spirit for humanity as the Lamb slain before the foundation of the world, and then two thousand years ago became flesh and father God in him, Holy Spirit with him, in him, through him, became flesh in order to save the world. And this is John the Baptist pointing to that. And he came in Israel to walk in, in that, at that time, the Messiah, and they were looking for the Messiah. They just didn't expect him to come in the way he did, right? John was not the light that came to show who he is, for he was merely a messenger to speak the truth about the light. Well, you know what? I'm a messenger to speak the truth about the light. And I'm having a fun time speaking. I'm hoping it's bringing happy to you and light and life to you. Um, for the perfect light of truth was coming into the world um, and shine upon everyone. See, God is not a respecter of persons. There's not a single person that he doesn't shine on. But we have problems. We have a hard time seeing it. We have hardened hearts. We've turned away. We've gotten so much trauma we can't see. All sorts of stuff. We're prideful. We're fearful. And we run away from good stuff. We're confused about what is good and what is evil. All these different things. And it interferes with our ability to see this light that is already present, but that light is shining on all humanity because God loves all his kids, including you and including that one uh, that you that drives you berserk, so maybe someone you hate. Yeah, God's shining on them too. Why? Because they're still his kids. Okay, um, let's see. Mm, he entered in the world, uh, he created, and yet the world was unaware. Okay, ding to ding ding. This is diagnostic. God has entered the world. God is in the world. Holy Spirit is everywhere. And we are unaware. We are blind. This is diagnostic. We are blind. Well, so what do you do with blind people? You help them see. And that's what God does. Okay, so diagnostic. If you're not seeing him, there's a blindness. And we all have blindness somewhere. I see him here and I see him here, but here I can't see him. Okay. Does that mean he's not there? No, that means I'm blind. <laughs> okay. And this is everyone. Okay. Um, he came into the world. He created to those who should have received him. This is literally talking about the, um, the Israeli people, right? They should have seen him, but they didn't. But you know, this is, this is nabbing us too. We should see him, but we don't. Right. But they did not recognize him. Because they assume their Messiah was going to come looking different, like a judging thing to cast down the um, immoral uh, kingdom of the world that was operating. And he was like, no, I'm not doing that. I'm doing something else. Okay. Didn't like that, but that's what it was. <laughs> okay. And, but we do that too. We have a, we have our own little kingdoms that we like. And so we're like, well, you're not coming like that. Well, I, I don't have anything to do with you. And you don't recognize him. So blindness and inability to recognize. So how do you heal that? Well, you heal blindness and you heal this inability to recognize him. Um, and then it says, but those, I lost my place here. Sorry. Sorry, I really came down. Um, but those who embrace him and took hold of his name, he gave authority be to become the children of God. Okay, now let me just help you. 
all of us who embrace God and take hold of, of his name, of who he is. Jesus, you're mine. I'm turning towards you because you've already turned towards me, but I'm turning back from darkness to you, whether it's for the first time that you do it like, and you're aware of it, or it's like, oh, in this place of darkness where I was turned away from you, I was maybe blind to that. Maybe I was prideful in it, whatever. I'm just turning towards you. This is an ongoing process, right? He gave authority to become the children of God. Now, let me just say, were you not a child of God? Of course you were a child of God. But as you turn back, you have authority now as a son and daughter. If you don't know you're a son and daughter, you don't have any authority of your, da your dad's authority because you don't know you have authority. If you've turned, you now know you have authority. You are have power now, the right behind the might to help things that need to go from hellish to heavenly. Okay, you have authority to do that. Um, he was born by the joining of human parents. Uh, let me tell him this again. Um, he was joined, he was not born, sorry, by the joining of human parents or from natural means or by man's desire, but he was born of God. Um, Christ in the flesh was born of God. And guess what? You were born of God. Yeah, I know you came through natural parents and maybe that was a happy thing and maybe that was an unhappy thing, but your parentage is ultimately God because nothing comes into existence apart from God. So he's your father. And if you're turned away from him, you're not seeing that, right? And you're experiencing darkness. When you turn towards him, you start to see. And oh, and the more you see, the more you will see. And it's beautiful. Um, let's go. Oh, to one of my favorites. Okay. Um, let's go to Psalm 45, uh, verse 10. This is a passion translation. It says, now listen, daughter. Pay attention and forget about your past. Okay, now this is an invitation. You know what? If you've been traumatized, uh, it will be impossible for you to forget about your past, except as God heals you, you may remember your past, but it doesn't hurt anymore. It's like, yeah, that was hor that was hellish, but you know what? It doesn't define me. It doesn't hurt anymore because I know who I am and I'm healed. I feel pure. I feel clean. I feel without shame. I feel powerful. I know who I am and I'm not buying for the lies anymore. Now listen, daughter, pay attention. So when the when the when the Bible says now listen and pay attention, you get a double like, okay, wake up. Wake up. <laughs> listen. Okay, pay attention. Okay, this is important. Forget about your past. So the only way you forget about your past is through that healing that God provides. And he's doing it if you're turning towards him, right? Forget about your past. Put behind you every attachment to the familiar. So what's familiar to you? If you've been abused, that's familiar. If you were abandoned, that's familiar. If you were rejected, that's familiar. If you were in poverty, that's familiar. If you were um, just wiped out with some physical malady, that's familiar, right? All of these are fallen things, right? Um, uh, even those who are once close to you. So this is not saying, you know, if you have godly family and things like that, this is not saying like flee from godly family. It means that God is family first and whatever that does not look like the kingdom of heaven, put that behind you. Let God help you put that behind you. Let him help you heal your heart. It says for your royal bridegroom, this is Jesus. Another thing of uh, between, we were talking about Jesus as the lamb, as light, as life, as truth, as love, as the word, as the lamb slain before the foundation of the world. And now he is your royal bridegroom. Why? Because you have God, the father, who is your father. And then you have Jesus, the son, who is your elder brother, who is also your husband. Don't get all weird about that we always make things sexual and it's, we just get weird. It's not that 
um, for your royal bridegroom is ravished by your beautiful brightness. So he's your husband and he's saying, oh, you're so beautiful, right? You have an impact on God, the splendor that he made you with your, your elder brother, your, your best friend, um, your husband, these are all Christ's, um, attributes, your heavenly father and Holy spirit who sees you as the object is delight is ravished by your beautiful brightness. You look just like him. And he looks at you and is like, Oh, that's my son. That's my daughter. Wow. Right. Bow in reverence before him for he is Lord. You know, one of the ways that you can turn from the darkness to the light is let God love you. Let God see you as the beautiful daughter, son, bride, friend that you are to him slash her. Okay. Honor him for his Lord. Why? When I look at my kids, and there are times, you know, it's, it's cute at different ages. I, I just like to watch them, you know, and there are times when I just want to turn their little faces or their big faces towards me and just go, honey, they're so amazing. You're so beautiful. And I, and, and if they turned away because they were ashamed or they turn away because they feel not that it hurts my heart. Why? Because they're so beautiful and so amazing and they need to know it and they need to know it from me as their mom and they need to know it from their dad and they need to know that from their heavenly dad, their heavenly friend, their heavenly husband, their head, right? And this is the way that we honor God. We let him say, you're so beautiful and we don't like, you know, squiggle. And I mean, I understand for a lot of you, this is hard, um, but honestly, you let him say, you're pure, you're beautiful. You don't need to be naked and ashamed. There's nothing in you. All the stuff that's in you right now, that's not who you are. Yeah, I'm healing or I'm, I'm paring away. I'm washing away. I'm cleansing. But who you are is eternal. And that's full of beautiful brightness because the light of who I've made you to be um, is the light that's actually in you. Turning to me, I will heal that, right? Um, okay. Um, and so this means that we need to call what is good, good, which is ourselves and call what is evil, evil, anything that's not who we are. Right. Um, Isaiah 5, 19 through 21, it says, let, um, let him, um, let, let's go to actually verse 20. Sorry. Um, woe to them that call evil good and good evil that put darkness for light and light for darkness that put, put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Woe to them that are wise in their own eyes and prudent in their own sight. Now this woe, um, woe is a big deal. Woe means bad things are going to happen. When you call evil good and good evil, bad things will happen. There's full of woe and you bring woe to other people. This is why sin is, it's like a sickness. Sin is a sickness um, because it, it harms us and it harms other people. And this is what, what, when we partner with the enemy, when we've turned away from the light, we participate in that and we're calling evil, good and good evil. Right. And woe happens, bad things happen. And that's not God's punishing. That means there's nothing in darkness, but hell. Okay. Maybe pleasure for a season, but it's hell. Okay. Um, uh, let's see. Woe to them that are wise in their own eyes. A lot of times, one of the sins of humanity, we just get wise. We think we know better than God. And, and, and I would, I would challenge you if you are calling yourself evil, if you are calling yourself ugly, if you are calling yourself bad, if you are calling yourself um, mean things, you know what? You are wise in your own eyes. Stop it. Okay. Because that's not what God is saying about you. Now he may well. Oh, he probably is nabbing you about ways of being that are evil. Ways of being are not identity. They're ways you act because you're operating out of brokenness. Okay. We sin 
out of brokenness because we don't know who we are, but who you are is good. So you say, I'm good. I don't feel like I'm good, but I'm good. You say, I'm beautiful. Well, I don't feel like I'm beautiful and I'm certainly acting ugly, but I'm beautiful. And you just let it, everything in there that's like, no, it's not, no, it's not. Let it jiggle because eventually it's going to break loose as you continue to say what God is saying because you're calling good, good and calling evil, evil. What happened to you that made you feel dirty and shameful and powerless and evil? Okay, that's what happened to you, but that doesn't change who you are. We need to come into the light. That means as an act of our will, we come, we choose this. We choose to say good things about ourselves. And when we say bad things about ourselves, we repent. We're like, oh, I did again. Forgive me, Jesus. Okay, I receive it. I'm good. I'm beautiful, right? I'm kind, right? And the more you do that, the more you'll see the fruit of that. Why? Because you're bringing up your understanding of who you are in the image and likeness of God. You're turning towards the light so you can walk in the ways of the light, right? He who knew no sin, that was Jesus, became sin. That was Jesus on the cross. That we would be made, that's you, me, and humanity, the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So in Christ, we are the righteousness of God. That means our rightness, our goodness, the truth of our being, um, was made that way in Christ. And let me just say this. Let me just go back to John 1, just in case we get confused, because we have this way of, in the church, we are, and, and out, even outside the church, you're either in or you're out. We have this thing. And let me just remind you, I will find it. It's worth me searching for. <laughs> okay, uh, John 1, 3. Uh, through his creative inspiration, the living expression, that's Christ, made all things. For nothing has existence apart from him. So let me just ask you, do you have existence? Yes. So you don't have existence apart from him. The only thing you can do is turn away and experience something that's non-existence, that's darkness. So turn back. This is all Christ, and he made you pure, righteous, holy uh, in his sight. That's how you were made. So start agreeing with it and let everything that doesn't feel that way jiggle, okay? Yeah, I'm saying it, but I'm not feeling it. Okay, well, keep saying it. Keep saying it and let all that stuff start to fall off. He's there to cleanse it. He's there to, um, to heal it, be transformed or transfigured by the renewing of your mind. Well, you've got to start to figure out, well, what is God saying? Okay, I'm saying that. And your feelings will follow. Your feelings will follow. And sometimes it's a big battle, but welcome to humanity. You've got no better offers. Do the big battle, <laughs> fight the right fight. And it gets easier. It gets easier. Turn towards the light. You're lovely. Uh, let any shame, let anything that doesn't look like who you really are be cleansed and washed away. Let God reveal the lies that are messing with you, that are bringing death. Let God reveal those and replace them with his truth. Let God heal your heart, heal your trauma, cleanse you from unrighteousness, cleanse, cleanse you from shame. Your behavior will come up higher. You will start to see yourself more and more as you really are and keep on going. Keep on going. It is worth it. Come into the light. This is a season where it may be getting darker on this side of the hemisphere, but that's why we bring out all the lights. And Jesus is the light of the world who bursts through in the darkness because he refused, um, God refused to leave humanity to, um, to uh, struggle in in the darkness and to struggle uh, in false identities and the destruction of the sinful ways of being that come because we don't know who the heck we are and we don't know who God is. Anyway, happy, happy holidays. If you're watching it during this time, if it's not holiday time for you, happy light bringing uh, time. Enjoy. God is here. He's always here to bring light wherever we turn back. 
Love you guys. Have a great day. Bye-bye.